finishing getting everything set up right now. on my stream please let me know if my music is too loud or too soft in here. How are you tonight? I'm just finishing it up, so I should be done in just a moment, so if you bear with me. So I figured I'd make it a themed kind of you pick it, you draw it, and then some some weeks it'll just be like a plain old um, just you pick it, you draw it. <laughs> I wouldn't say plain, but yeah, I pretty much draw whatever.
So, to start off on the Greek mythology uh, theme, um, if you're not a huge mythology person, um, or if you like it with the mythology being a little bit more uh, fun, I highly suggest you pick out, watch, or not watch, but read the YouTube, or not YouTube, Webtoons, ah, Webtoon series, Lore Olympus. It has a modern twist on Greek mythology, and it has some fantastic artwork, and it's got a great storyline. But yeah, um, it bases around Persephone and um, Hades, who is the god of the underworld in Greek mythology, and his wife, Persephone, who is the goddess of spring and the goddess of the dead. So she kind of has a dual role going on. So, until everybody starts getting in here and everything like that, I will actually pick something to draw. And what I'm going to do is draw the Dread Queen herself, Persephone, in her not-so-nice form. So, yeah. And if I'm saying Persephone wrong, which I don't think I am, um, hey, Anna Game X, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, while I get ready to draw. give you a little bit of backstory before I actually draw the Persephone from the Lore Olympus. Um, so, Persephone spelled P-E-R-S-E-F-O-N-E in Greek mythology, also known as Kor or Kora or Young Maiden, uh, was the embodiment of the Earth's fertility and queen of the underworld. She is often mentioned as a paradigm of myths and explains natural processes such as the change of seasons. Um, her story, however, is an ambient place in ancient Greek mythology. On one hand, her innocent abduction by Hades and her mother's subsequent search for her daughter has a great emotional power. In this light, Persephone symbolizes the type of life, death, rebirth deity uh, who is eventual return to signify his life. So, what happened was is that Demeter had a child named Persephone, and her father was Zeus. And Demeter was pretty much a helicopter mom, always overseeing Persephone and everything like that, keeping him in the mortal realm, um, until one day, uh, Persephone got mad at Demeter and then took off and just went to the underworld. And Hades didn't really kidnap her, she just kind of poofed there, um, and pretty much told Hades, yeah, this is my home now, so yeah, and I kind of like it here. And Hades just happens to be like, yeah, ah, let's go along with it. So she eats um, some of the fruit from the underworld, but while in the meantime, in the back of the mortal realm, Persephone's mom Demeter starts going on a rampage, pretty much causing drought and famine and pretty much a giant coldness to overtake the earth, which signifies fall and winter. Well, Demeter finally figures out where Persephone is. Persephone comes back to the mortal realm and she's like, Persephone, did you eat? anything from the underworld she goes well i had about six pomegranate seeds and she goes six that means you have to live six months in the underworld oh okay so six months out of the year she lives in the underworld and then six months out of the year she lives in the mortal realm so when she comes back that signifies the start of spring into summer and then when she goes to leave back into the underworld it's the start of fall and winter which is considered miserable 
But yeah, she, that's why she's often portrayed as holding a pomegranate and everything like that. So, um, yeah, that's just the short kind of like, yeah, version of, of it so I don't have to go into the whole background of it and everything like that. But yeah, she's really cool. But I'm going to draw her Dread Queen form, which is in the, in the Lore Olympus webtoon. So yeah, if you guys know any other wars from Greek mythology, let me know and I will get to it. And also, if you have any friends who happen to like Greek mythology as well, please invite them in so we can have some fun have some like a uh, mind stimulating chats and everything like that so yeah but yeah the one that I'm drawing right now uh, the character Persephone belongs to um, Rachel Smith for the Lore Olympus series um, I don't have any claims to it but I am however using it as reference so If you have any questions about this lore, part of the lore in particular, I'm actually pretty well versed on it um, in the lore Olympus version and the actual Greek, Greek mythology version. So, oh, thank you for the like. But yeah, I think my microphone was off when I went into that whole explanation. So, uh, the, ooh, uh, Persephone is actually the only woman to ever make. Um, Aphrodite jealous because she, uh, it was once said that Persephone actually rivals that of Aphrodite and Aphrodite did not like that too well. So she's like, um, nope. Oh, you just want to hear more info on it? Yeah, so, um, Persephone is often portrayed as having, carrying a scythe, and it's the same scythe her mother Demeter um, carries. Now, in the Lore Olympus world, um, the, the webtoon, there's not so much incest or anything that's going on, because in actual, Greek mythology, there's a lot of that. <laughs> um, let's see, how can I put it? Zeus is the, the gods of gods. He was the only one not eaten by Kronos. Um, Hades and Poseidon, who are brothers, um, were eaten by Kronos. And they were in there for like, I don't know, it was like a few thousand years before he came out. they came out. So yeah, those three are brothers, right? Demeter is actually Zeus's sister. 
and Hades' sister and Poseidon's sister. Zeus and Demeter have Persephone, which makes Persephone Hades' niece. <laughs> And, which, it gets kind of even more weird because, um, it, come to find out, Hades really cannot have children, even though Persephone is the goddess of fertility, she cannot have children with Zeus. Which turns into Zeus disguises himself as Hades. Yeah, yeah. Zeus, I, uh covers himself as, or disguises himself as Hades, ends up having relations with Persephone, which is his daughter, and ends up having three children with her. But she wholeheartedly believed that um, it was Hades, so they're often uh, referenced to as being uh, the children of Hades. But in the Lower Olympus version, Rachel version, uh, version, uh, Rachel Smith actually eliminated all of that, where Persephone was actually created instead of conceived, which is fine with me because then it gets rid of all that, um, all that extra stuff. <laughs> so it makes it less gross. But once you know the like the whole background to it, yeah. But yeah, technically, like, and also in the series as well, Athena is her roommate, but in the actual mythology, um, Athena is Persephone's sister. And so is Apollo, but Apollo in the story, he ends up raping Persephone, which makes Hades very, 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 very angry. And yeah. Also, Hades at the times um, was also, before he met Persephone, uh, was dating a nymph called Mint, which sounds very similar to a plant, Mint. So apparently, Mint was like, hey, you're not as pretty as me. Um, he will never love you for who you are. Um, he'll always be with me. You know, your beauty, beauty, your beauty does not compare to mine. So yeah. So the mix-up where the story goes is that it's either Demeter who does it or Persephone who, out of her wrath, turns mint into the mint plant. Um, it's a weak and fragile plant that's used in cooking. <laughs> so I'm just going into a whole bunch of different lore that revolves around these two, but there's also several different ones like um, Medusa and all that fun stuff. If you're just joining me, I'm currently drawing the Lore Olympus version of Persephone. So that way, because there's too many mix-ups of how she actually looks and everything like that, and I just kind of want to draw one that I really like the stylization of, because nobody really knows what Persephone looks like, because she's a goddess. Yeah, if you happen to know a little bit more about the lore than I do, please, please feel free to correct me or add to it. Because I love to hear about Greek mythology. Actually, different kind of mythologies, really. Like in this form, she has the capability of growing her hair out, making it really long. Most of the time in the series, however, she does keep it short. But when she gets angry or stressed out or anything like that, she it tends to grow. Which is how you know she's upset. That and her eyes glow super red and everything like that.
but yeah, in the Lore Olympus series and stuff like that, she is, she is known as the Dread Queen because apparently she did this huge act of wrath and uh, spoilers for anyone who is actually watching the series, I don't want to spoil it, or I shouldn't spoil it, um, but yeah, she did this big act of wrath and it's like all shrouded in mystery and that... Um, it got hidden from Zeus, and it's not, it's pretty much showing Persephone in a very bad light, but she had good reason behind it, so. like these really pointy crown things that only like <laughs> it's really really good and she has like these uh this is technically how uh rachel smith draws the crowns on all the goddesses and gods and they all have their own little um type of crowns and this is just so happens to be persephone's draw them gradually bigger and bigger each time and then you just kind of shrink down and just dun dun and in the this lore the lore olympus um rachel does more monochromatic colors so um yeah or they call her core cob but um she is all pink. Thank you. And normally she just has um, pink skin, pink hair, and then when she's angry, she has red eyes. So we need to find a proper pink for. She's more purple. But she's like a pinkish purple. There we go, that looks more like it. No. I just keep changing all her colors. Actually, paint on her without ruining any of my lines. Oh crap, I forgot about that. Okay, so with the layers, um, no, oh, I don't want watercolor. Um, with the layers and stuff like that, I can actually just draw over it, like, like so, and not touch any of my lines. 
Yeah, pretty much like Pink Princess Bubblegum. But she's like a pinkish color, like pinkish purple. But there's like all the, there's a giant fan base for her. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like I'm part of a, a few of the, the, the groups as well, because I'm hugely into the fandom and everything like that. So now her hair is a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to color this in. I'm liking this music. And since I'm on another layer, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually quite surprised on how quickly I can draw. Um, I'm like, oh, this should take me forever, and did it. It's because I'm used to doing like these quick draw practices and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah. But also, I think um, the other thing with uh, Persephone's pink color, I think Rachel actually borrowed the color from Hercules. If you ever notice, like, the gods and stuff are all a certain type of color. And Persephone happens to be pink in the actual Disney version of Hercules. Thicker, so that way. There we go. There we go. But yeah, the layering on this is actually pretty cool. Like I can choose what layers and stuff like that. And then let's see, her eyes are like a deep red. So I actually need to go back to my shading layer and draw in her eyes. And then use my blending tool to kind of blend them in a little bit so you get that off color. I need to go a little lighter to kind of get her highlights on her face. Oh, wait a minute. I see what they did there. They put kind of the, the lighting down here to kind of. really quickly so that way we can get to all the Greek mythologies that we can and not just hang around on a few I 
I love this blending tool. It's so amazing. Actually, I need to take some of that right there. Make the brush size a little smaller. And actually do on her lips. And then the reason why I kind of made her hair a little bit as messy as I did, um, actually, this brush size bigger, is I'm going to blend in a lot of the red that I'm going to be putting down on this. That way her crown doesn't look so dinky. to her hair. by Retza Schwarzall, Party Hard OST. Let's see, I need to get some black in here as well. Come back to my paint. Our Dread Queen Persephone. Goddess of Fertility and Spring. Yeah, apparently she was more feared than Hades. Right. 
All right, what is another mythology you would like to hear about? Kind of wearing something similar to what she's got on. <laughs> Yeah, she was, you love Ares, god of war. Um, Ares is the god of war and one of 12 Olympian gods and the son of Zeus and Hera. Um, in, literal, uh, in literature, Ares represents the violent and physical untamed aspect of war, which is in the contrast to Athena, who represents military strategy and generalship as the goddess of intelligence. Um, so pretty much he is a god with a big temper. And he ends up marrying, no, actually ends up dating Aphrodite for the longest time. And I guess Aphrodite screwed something up, so Zeus ended up having relations with Aphrodite, which pissed Ares off, and then I guess there were some clashes with um, Ares and everything like that, and yeah, he's, I can actually go into a little bit more detail. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, he... Zeus is, I don't know, Zeus is just crazy. Zeus is super crazy. Um, so, the Greeks were ambivalent towards Ares and he embodied the physical valor necessary for success in war and he was a dangerous force. Oh, he had an overwhelming um, lust for battle and war and anger and he fed off of that and he killed a yeah, he is, he is. And he killed a lot of people. Um, Ares, and, uh, Ares endows places and objects with savage, dangerous, militarized quality, and he values, uh, uh, his value as a good war god is placed on a, uh, bleh, placed in doubt. During the Trojan War, Ares was on the losing side, while Athena, often depicted in Greek art, holding a knife or victory in her hand, favored the tri uh, triumphant Greeks. Um, he, he's also played a very limited role in Greek mythology, so he's not mentioned as much in Greek mythology. Um, the, also, the counterpart to him in a, another mythology would be uh, the Roman god Mars. So, a lot of continents and peoples and stuff like that had very similar gods and everything like that, so... So, now that I can get some pictures, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, yes, I'm going to draw Aris. I'm not going to draw the Lore, Olymp Lore Olympus version of Ares. I'm going to do more of like the actual Greek mythology style of Ares. <laughs> So there's a style of Greco art where they painted on pots and everything like that. It was a very simplistic art. I'm trying to find one that's not so swooshed. art I'm gonna do is it's gonna start with more of a silhouette and then it's just gonna have like gold linings so we have more of a bright orange in the, the 
middle. So I'm gonna fill it up with the oh okay. You're not gonna let me draw on it? And then we're gonna go a little dark around the edge. To kind of set like the way the pottery would be. A lot of these drawings don't seem like much when you begin off with but you always have to like typically start with the background first but with the power of layering on digital you can completely avoid that step and add it in layered layer later if you would like no dang it why are my buttons next to each other okay so what i'm trying to do is kind of emulate a little bit about the pottery and I'm going to do more of the traditional Greco style again. Um, the first one I did was Persephone look from Laura Linvis, that style. But I kind of want to go with more of the traditional Greece style. All right, now we will switch to black. Lay tur. Later? Why are you saying later? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw his outline and then I'm going to add in the details with a gold kind of marker. So what I'm doing is mostly the more um, traditional style of Greek art. So yeah. Layer, 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 like Greek pot drawings and stuff like that it's actually pretty entertaining on how they look but I'm just drawing the outline and like I said I'm gonna highlight with gold Caesar salad. Um, actually, you know what? Just to humor you, I could draw you a Caesar salad. <laughs> We're doing the Greek gods version. want to draw courage the cowardly dog now. <laughs> Zyphrus. 
I will do Zypress. Then we'll actually do a little bit of a story time with him. kids or anything like that um, this is a good kind of like world history kind of lesson that, that I think they still teach I'm not sure if they're not being all pains in the butt about it too fun little spear. So other than a chaos god, Ares sounds like he was just kind of useless. <laughs> for the yellow. Okay, so, I'm gonna draw this little hair piece here. Jello, Jello! Oh, that makes me want some Jello. Look at me, I look glamorous. Oh. style Greece Grecian as they used to say it I've been told that Grecian is not an actual name for Greece Greeks but apparently it is because that's how I say Grecians or Greeks or whatever but and then I, I proved it wrong that they do say Grecians
have no clue what it, the symbol is on the shield, so don't ask. with a giant glowy thingy on the end because that's how they have the picture. part of his toga. Where it's like do, 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 and then it kind of curves down like that. Got the back of his leg, and that part, and then this part, and then the one that goes here. And the braces off there. And then do do. Draw his little fingers. I'm not going for photo perfect, but yeah. <laughs> Hot designs that are on there. See, and then they had some black lines that are like this. drawing like some old incantation for Aries. It's like, ah, oh, you have summoned me. Yes, more. And like over here off to the side where this little, my little mouse is, it's got like a, all the other Greek people that he pretty much assassinated. All right, and that, but yeah, so Zypher said she just popped in. Um, that's Persephone. And then you got Aries. Now we will do, you said Zypher? Zyphers?
so Zyphorus, sometimes known in English as just Zypher. In Latin, Favinus, the Greek god of the west wind, the gentlest of the winds, Zyphorus is known for as the fructifying wind, the messenger of spring, as it was thought that Zyphorus lived in a cave in Thrace. So, it sounds like Zyphorus is maybe one of the gods that announced the arrival of Persephone, who is the goddess of spring. I'm going to grab my jug of water real quick, just a second. going on in a game because I'm already on a blank page. Okay, so Cypress, it looks like he's often portrayed as having wings. Alright, we're going to do an old sketch style of Cypress. So the background it looks very pencil-y, so we're going to use a pencil stencil. So this is in the stylization of Renee Baribu, Boo or something like that. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to draw a cypress. It's going to be like more like colored pencil kind of, kind of look. weird stylization, but it falls right in line with the style of art that the Greeks did. Too much about Cyprus, but let's share some more facts. Um, he was the rival of the god Apollon for the love of Hythysius. One day he spies the pair playing a game of Quotios in a metal, meadow, and in a jealous rage blew the disc off course with a gust of wind, causing it to strike the, uh, the boy in the head and killing him instantly. Apollon, stricken with grief, transformed the dying youth into larkspur flower. Um, Zyphros was depicted in classical art as handsome winged youth. So, sounds like it's very similar to, um, almost Cupid, because Cupid or Eros, who was the son of Aphrodite and Ares, uh, was Cupid. So it sounds like he's very similar to him. Um, although some come into commenters interpret them okay it says uh sorry uh, greek face painting the unlabeled figures of a winged god embracing a youth are often identified as zephyros and hythikmios although some commentators interpret them as eros love with a generic youth in greco-roman mosaic 
the god usually appears in the guise of spring, personified carrying a basket of unripe fruit. Hmm. this adjuster tool because I can make it as big or as small as I wanted. tool too much since the um, first time I started doing you think I draw she has a very very awkward style of drawing which I'm kind of intrigued with a little bit I mean, it looked like he had no arms. I'm gonna have to fix that in just a second. He's got them cranky, uh, cake grandma <laughs> around his head, almost like a crown of flowers. I'm gonna kind of leave him as is. No. Oh gosh, that looks awful. No. Nice draw of wind coming out.
He's also depicted as that one guy who, um, what should we call it? That looks like the big face that goes like that. Flying bean. But yeah, that's the stylization. <laughs> I have my avatar in, in the profile pic. Gamers, I don't believe I've ever had you in here before. So that's it for Zyphros. Alright, any other Greek gods that you would like me to draw or share the mythology behind it? impression that you didn't mean to type that in here and <laughs> kind of got a little bit confused. <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Well, since, uh, let's see. What we could do is, uh, if you want anything else drawn, just let me know. It doesn't necessarily have to be Greek or anything like that. Janice. Is it a god or a goddess? Faces, huh? All right, let's check Janice out. Let's see. In ancient Roman religion and myth, Janice, or no, Ivis, I Ivis pronounced, oh yeah, Janice, this is the God of Beginnings, Gates, Transition, Time, and Duality, Doorways, Passages, Frames, and Endings. So if you go through anywhere, you gotta, you gotta go past this guy. Usually he's depicted as having two faces since he looks for the future and the past. It is conventionally thought that the month of January is named for Janice, but according to ancient Roman fathers, farther, I got hair, tip of my ear, um, do you know was to two hour day de de of the month. Janice presided over the beginning and ending of conflict and hence war and peace. So I guess he was in league with Eros or Ares. Hence war and peace. Uh, the gates building of Rome are named after him. Um, were opened in the time of war and closed to mark the arrival of peace, which did not happen very often as a god transitions. He had functions pertaining to birth and journeys as an exchange in association with Portness, a symbol, similar harbor and gateway god. He was concerned with traveling, trading, and shipment or shipping. Um, I guess Janus had no flamin or specialized priests assigned to him, but the king of the sacred rites himself carried out ceremonies for Janus. Hmm. He seems like a pretty, uh, pretty interesting god. Okay. Let's 
see if I can find it. Decent. Reference photo. Alright, so. What I'm going to do is. Since he has two faces, I'm going to see about using my. my rule ruler feature and then what I can do is let's see what is it I have what's called a um, a mirroring tools where trying to be able to duplicate his face like exactly because if trying to figure out how to use the mirror. You guys are kind of learning with me on how to do it. Mirroring tool reality. Or not reality, but um Flip Studio. Layer which creates ruler, selects a rule for the tool palette. Keep on that. that doesn't help at all. No, I don't want to watch a video. Okay, I'm just going to have to probably wing it. And, uh, draw it and see if it'll mirror. Okay. Why'd you have to pick me one with two faces? <laughs> okay, so. Hold up. Where are my tools? Having a rough time here. Oh, jeez. Where's my adjustment tool? <laughs> what the hell? Jeez, 
What did I do? What did I do? Tool settings. Oh, now I'm super frustrated. I drawing Janice, but I lost one of my tools and I don't know how to get it back. And I'm kind of having a little bit of a meltdown here. size of what the um, pins and brushes are. And I lost it, so now I'm, 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 I'm actually kind of upset. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to go with it and just draw what I got. setting. So. And see this, the symmetry tool, symmetry tool is actually really, really helpful because drawing the same face twice can sometimes be a little difficult. So I'm super glad that I have this tool on here. I can't, the undo button only is uh, directly for, um, uh, the actual paint itself. <sighs> I'm a little bit frustrated, flustered at the moment. kind of falls in line with the reference of look forward to the future and the past at the same time. And yeah. Okay, now 
we're going to add some shading into it. him all purdy up. Oh well, I'll just work with what I got. I can't freak out over the little thing. Outside of it, I'll actually go back and try to figure it out. I don't want to erase it. I want to blend it. I want to blend it. Oh dang, I forgot it mimics. <laughs> but yep, yeah, that is Janice. The Two Face. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I had that that uh that reflector button. See if I can figure this out and actually add it back somehow. other kind of Greek because I kind of ran through like the main gods and goddesses up there like Athena is the goddess of wisdom um, she sprung from Zeus's knee Artemis sprung from the head of Zeus um, Hera is the goddess of all gods but she's also the goddess of marriages and happy relationships and stuff like that and, um, yeah, and then you have Apollo, or as a lot of people call him, Ask Apollo. He was a total womanizer, just like Zeus, but he was the apple of uh, Zeus's eye. Revert it back to how it was. <laughs> Is 
the one that you want in a game X? Yeah, and you are right. You already suggested two, so um, we'll give it in a game X or somebody else a shot at it. I'm actually happy now. The Greek god of fire and metalworking. Hephaestus was the god of fire, metalworking, stone masonry, forges, and the art of sculpture. It was believed that Hephaestus taught men the arts alongside Athena. However, he was also considered far more inferior than the goddess of wisdom. Ooh, this sounds like somebody's calling out someone. Got some beef going on. Um, in Greek mythology, Hephaestus was either the son of Zeus and Hera, or he was Hera's uh, Parthenogenes child. I have no clue what Parthenogenes means. I think it might be his created her created child. He was cast off Mount Olympus by his mother because of his deformity, or in other account by Zeus for protecting Hera from his advances. Oh, so he might be a child outside of. Zeus's and Hera's marriage. As a smithing god, Hephaestus made all the weapons of the gods in Olympus. He served as a blacksmith of the gods and, worship, and was worshipped in the manufacturing industrial centers of Greece, particularly Athens. The cult of Hephaestus was based in Limnos, and Hephaestus' symbols are uh, the hammer, the anvil, and the pair of thong, thongs. And I think Hephaestus will actually be the last one I do. Mission complete, yes. So see as he is the god of fire, He was very important to mankind, unless he wasn't allowed to, um... Yay! Welcome, 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 Kirby Fukua. Fukawa, sorry. I didn't mean to say your name wrong. <laughs> welcome, 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 how are you? find a good reference photo for Hephaestus. Okay, I'm actually going to do just his symbols for So his symbols consist of an anvil, uh, the heating tongs, and the hammer. Boy, mess that up. Straighten out for me. And don't mind that beeping noise in the background. Um, that's actually my 3D printer. Oh, what? I need to draw a straight line. There we go. straight line down here. No, that's too close to the top.
How are you? How are you? So it's, I'm assuming you know Anagamiacs. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Normally I do, yeah, the anvil for smashing. Uh, normally I do pick it, you draw it, or p you pick it, I draw it. I keep messing that up. Um, and um, I'll pretty much draw whatever you ask me to, but sometimes I'll do like themed ones. Like last week was the conspiracy theory one, which was hilarious. That one turned out pretty good. So this week I'm trying Greek Mythos, and it seems to be doing pretty okay too. Allergies is nothing else. That's actually the symbol for Hephaestus, the god of fire, and and blacksmithing. But yeah, I don't just do little doodles like this. Sometimes I'll actually sit down and draw some stuff. I don't know if I have like the ones from my other computer because I have a laptop that I draw on as well that I save stuff to that I get stuff that turns out pretty well. Oh, go away messages. We can sit and chat for a moment, otherwise I will end my stream and then go to bed because I'm horribly tired. She has dun dun. The giggle cough. <laughs> you don't know how many times I go into a grocery store and people look at me because I have really bad allergies. And um, yeah, I'll go into a grocery store and um, they'll give me dirty looks. I actually had a bunch of people let me cut in line because of it. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Why? Why? Oh my! <sighs> 
some other stuff in the works. Um, so yeah, I am working on a webtoon to uh, make more comics and stuff like that. And then working on drawings and everything for my digital art pad. And yeah. Yeah, I got the sleepies. I'm super tired. Get my mess of a cords. But yeah, I do this every Wednesday. And then Fridays, I do traditional Fridays. So if you guys pick an artist you'd want me to do, let me know and I will do that artist. Otherwise, I just pick random ones and I'm like, okay. Because the first one I did was Bob Ross. He's one of my all-time favorites. Second one I did was Pablo Picasso. Or not Pablo Picasso, blah, blah, blah. Vincent Van Gogh. And this next one, if nobody chooses anything else, I am going to do Pablo Picasso. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end my stream. I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. Um, but I will be streaming again Friday. Um, it's very possible tomorrow I may be on Twitch um, under... My Twitch name is uh, Valkyries AC. If you want to check me out on there? Probably try to get in on the whole Twitch things things before, um, yeah, um, before they uh, decide to shut it down because apparently they're getting rid of Twitch things. So yeah. But um, I'm also working on printing something else. So Friday, if. I still have it because it's actually for somebody else, but um, I'll show it to you guys. It will be Jaina Proudmore's staff uh, from World of Warcraft. If, War, World of Warcraft. <laughs> World of Warcraft, if you're familiar with it. So, yeah, I just got a whole lot on my plate right now. Oh, and that's that's part of the paper. Actually, you know what? I'll show you some of the pieces I got done, so that way you can kind of see it. So this is the bottom of it. It's like a little anchor. And this is the top and one of the middle sections, but I'm missing a middle piece that goes here. So it's like, it's gonna be like huge. And then um, the top part right here is currently on the printer right now. So that's gonna hold the gemstone that's on there. So yeah, I'm currently working on this. <laughs> I'm gonna get everything all the glue dry and everything so oh. <laughs> so yeah um all right well i'm gonna head off for the night um i will see you guys later and have a good night day wherever you guys are Love all ya, and thank you, thank you, thank you for the views. I greatly appreciate it. So, um, I want you guys to do is try to help me grow as a channel, so that way I can promote more and um, get my channel to grow more, and that way I can show show the world my my love for art and hopefully get everyone more inspired for art. So, yeah, peace out. Good night. Bye.